We're on number 13 of the 48 Ways for Living. And there it reads that if you want to live, you have to have Beyishuv. Beyishuv means to sit. You have to sit. That we can do pretty well, huh? Sit. So, did you ever use the expression, well, I'll sit on it? Deliberate on life. Take your time. Think it over. You have to learn to be deliberate. Not hasty. Not over-anxious. Not on whims. Not snap decisions. But deliberate. Everybody here wants to have confidence in his decisions. Confidence in your direction in life. Confidence in how you deal with problems. We have the wherewithal. We can make confident decisions for a job for marriage, for dealing with kids, for anything. <laughs> how do we get it? By being delivered. Now, how do we go about it? So the first of the how is that for all things of living, all life values, all life decisions, you just simply have to take time. You can't be hasty. Take time to do what? To mull it over, to think about it, to see the different aspects. But how do you do that? At first, you don't know how. You really don't know how. I mean, it's strange. Well, you, you just stand there sort of paralyzed. Well, remember when you first got on a bicycle? You were paralyzed too. How do you stay? <laughs> it's all right. We have the ability. You just keep trying. Take the time. Ask yourself, what should I be thinking about? How do I get confidence? What's the problem? Reach out, reach out, reach out. You'll learn how. It's a frustrating thing to do. But you want to build up confidence? It's necessary. But number two is to give you an idea of what it's about. So, how do you be deliberate and yet move fast? Anybody juggle? You juggle, Moshe, you juggle? You got to be fast, right? You can't just take your time. But at the same time, you got to be deliberate. You, know, you got to throw it in a certain way. If you just throw it, <laughs> it's all gone, right? So you got to be fast and deliberate. But those who don't juggle, let me try to use your imagination, jog your imagination. Imagine that you're walking on the parapet of the Empire State Building. Yeah? On both sides is the same sheer fall. It's a uh, wide, it's pretty sure footing, but wow, wow. <clears throat> yeah. Now imagine that in back of you is coming a maniac with a hatchet, and he's out to get you. Now you want to rush, yeah? You rush, but you got to be deliberate. You rush deliberately. Now you want to get somewhere in life, yeah? <laughs> if, you, if you're getting the wrong place, zoom, yeah. We can set dynamite charges under enemy fire. Deliberately, but not a second more than necessary, yeah? But you got to know what you're doing. You got to know how to do it. Otherwise, you just panic or you freeze. Okay, so number three is to get a little bit of direction. The essence of doing this is in being able to have confidence. The thing that we have most to fear is the fear of fear. Be afraid of being afraid. Meaning you have to have confidence that with time you will be sure. You will get clarity. You will have a good hold on any subject, on any decision. It will make sense. It will be obvious, firm, sure. You have to have that confidence. So in order to do this, I would say get a feel for this deliberateness, knowing when you know. And a good way of getting the feel is number four, to get the technique, to learn something about it, to feel it, is go over the Bible with the Chumish Simonim, like we have in the class, you know. Each paragraph, give it a one-word name. Now, if you're not going to read the Bible, you're not here, you're not going to... So, when you read a chapter in the biology book or in the book on economics, summarize it in ten words or less. What is the point of this chapter? What it does is helps you, you get the feel of sorting out a lot of information, making sure you have it, putting it organized into an essence. Because it's natural. So it's an excellent technique of gaining a deliberateness and seeing what to do. 
Number five is an excellent way in Judaism. It's an old technique in Jewish consciousness. Everybody knew about it, that whatever you study, study it five times. We're talking about the things that people should study. The people, the things should study is what you're living for. What is life? What's pleasure? What's happiness? What's love? What's meaning? That's what you should study because that's living. But it doesn't matter. Study economics. But study it five times. Read everything five times. And the rabbis give an excellent example. They say that wisdom is for the soul like food is for the body. So when you're going to raise your food, the first thing you've got to do is plow the ground. Put seed on the ground without plowing it. You're not going to get much. You're not going to get anything. So you've got to realize the first time you're cracking a subject, the first time you hear this idea, you're just plowing the ground, you're breaking it up, you're breaking preconceptions. The second time you review it, you're putting seeds into the ground. Yeah, you're making a little sense. There's, something will grow. The third time is you're reaping what grew. You're reaping your wheat. Now you have something. The third time, now you'll remember something. Now... If you ever get around to it, you'll chew on it, yeah? But the fourth time is you're digesting it. Really, best the five times. The fourth time is making it into bread, and the fifth time is digesting it. But four times is minimum. Until the fourth time, you're not really, you're not really participating. Just want to mention that B of this is that in Jewish consciousness, it's always good to let things lie a while and go back a week later. Then you're really deliberate. Then you're, you're like familiar with it and you can deal with the concept. So if you're doing a, a book on social work, don't think you're going to read it one time. <laughs> it's crammed for the finals. You know exactly how much good it does you, right? Enough that on the test you stab at it. And, all right, you might even have confidence if you've got a good head and a good memory. Yeah, but it doesn't mean a thing to you. You're just spitting it back. All right, number six is that the easiest way of gaining a good, a good hold on deliberateness and through that and confidence in living, although there's nothing that's really easy, it's still hard. It's still difficult. It takes practice. But the easiest way is to think about what happened during the day, what you learned. Review it in your mind. After this class, you walk out to the next class. Don't just drop it and look at the sun and the sky and talk and this. But go over it. What was said? What was, it? what was the subject? You'll find in the beginning you can't even remember. What was the way? Never mind, you can remember 13. Ridiculous. But what was the way? It was something about, wait, about uh, confidence uh, uh, being, what, what, what was it? It's gone. But this is a way that you gain confidence in your mind. You're looking at things. You're being delivered because you can't, it's not just going on, 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 on. You're there. Whatever you study, think about it. What did he say? What was happening? B of this is that in Jewish consciousness, we say, for goodness sake, the rest of your life, go over your day. At night, go over what happened today. You got up, how'd you get up? Good spirits, bad spirits. What did you learn from that? Uh, waste my time. Okay, right? How about breakfast? Hey, nice conversation. Yeah, what did you learn from it? What, what did it mean to you? Well, they're nice guys around. Okay, don't worry about it. But just go over your day. What happened today? Learn your life. Be deliberate. Like this, you're just running, 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 running through life. And maybe when you're 70 years old, you say, hey, what happened? <laughs> where, where, where did I get to? How did I get here? <laughs> if you can remember in the morning when you wake up to go over yesterday, you'll find it has a new dimension. Do you ever say, I'll sleep on a decision? You ever hear somebody say that? Clarifies it. Dust settles. It's a different dimension of deliberateness. Why are you dressing? Learn. What did you see yesterday? What did you do? What did you do right? What did you do wrong? What did you learn? What did you accomplish? What can you learn for tomorrow? You learn to be on top of yourself. Number seven is, how many of you guys have ever read, uh, anybody here from New York? Yeah, New Yorkers, okay. Do you ever go through the whole New York Times? Yeah? Spend the whole Sunday until four o'clock, and then your father or your friend says, so what's new? Yeah. You say, what? <laughs> ah, let's see. Uh, there was a terrific murder. <laughs> 
What's new? We have this proposition. We'll read a paper. We'll read in the Newsweek. We'll read the Time magazine. We'll read books. We'll read books on... And we figure it's going in the hopper. I'm growing, you know, getting bigger. But you take a look. There's nothing there. What happened? If you don't take the time to mull over, <laughs> it's just going to confuse you. Overloaded, unassorted information, overloaded. We have a fantastic computer, but if it's not organized, you don't have a program with it. Bang. <laughs> unassorted, unassimilated, undigested, undeliberated on information. So you've got to, is it worth the investment? Then it's worth mulling over it. At least summarize it. Give a summary. And the same thing goes. A conversation, a book, a novel. Whatever you read. If it's worth your investment, it's worth that extra time and asking yourself, so what was there? What, what was said? It's, it seems obvious, but you have to focus on it that it's something that should be done. Otherwise, you're sapping your confidence in being a sensible human being. What do you say, Eddie? Is that true, that it's sapping your confidence yeah, if you read uh, a news? Yeah. you saying uh, kid, uh, just read or pick up something to kill time? Oh, yeah. Eddie, I mean, if you've been around here, don't kill time, that's suicide. <laughs> that's you. Don't kill time. Go on, learn how to use it. Take pleasure. Not a shot, not morphine. Hmm. At least if you know I'm killing time, here I am. It's a little hard to do because there's something in you saying, don't do this. This is boring. This is awful. Yeah? But here you're, you're twisting it. You say, I'm learning about life. I'm reading a newspaper. I'm becoming well-informed. And you're not becoming well-informed. Yeah? Did I convince you, Eddie? Don't kill time. Just get a few techniques. You can all live. <laughs> you might as well enjoy. Or happiness. You know, there's things to enjoy. Growth. Yeah? That sound like a movie, like just for enjoyment, not, not for uh, tomorrow, just for, for the two hours of enjoyment. Like the force saves the guy at the last moment, right? <laughs> it's fantasy, you know, you know, fantasy, you can do better, you're king of the universe, and everybody is bound to you. Victor, you can do better, come on, let's go, you know, real fantasy, me and you, yeah, we'll divide the kingdom, right? You take the northern hemisphere, I take the southern hemisphere, right? Yeah? We'll have everybody listen to us and being happy, you know, doing all the... All right, let's go! Baseball game. Baseball game. <laughs> Slay it. <laughs> don't watch it. <laughs> you don't play it. At least you get some exercise. You got a good swing, you know? What do you want? Oh, boy, did he connect? Do you, do you see me? Yeah. Number eight is that it is best... To formalize this mulling over, know what you're doing. Now, that takes expertise. That's a little bit of a professional. That's a guy who's a juggler with 15. <laughs> he knows exactly what he's doing, where he's throwing each one. You follow? <laughs> to formalize it means know the questions that you ask in order to, to mull it over. Like, we got the fall coin crisis. Right? Now, how are you going to mull it over? If you have the right questions, what does it mean? What are the causes of this? What does it indicate about human events? Do they really want that piece of land? What are they fighting about? Honor? The fact that they've been able to sink three fridges. What does that mean? That Britain is risking a real defeat there. This is for honor. This is because they can't back out. They can't let the land because then... But what if they did back out? Then Britain would not be a power anymore. Now you're thinking about it, you're wondering about it, you're looking at it, you're back and forth, and you're getting something out of it, right? You're learning a little bit about what this world's about, and maybe that the Third World War can start on a matter of honor. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Take some time to get confident in what questions to ask. And when you get informal, you just go over it. So... Number nine is that you will find that you will ask yourself, what are you talking about, Rabbi? If I'm going to go over every article and ask these formal questions, one after the other, what, how, why, and then I, I, I won't finish one article a day. Yeah? I'm not going to be able to function. So, my friend, the speed of a juggler.
you will learn once you get it. You remember when you learned, I use that old example, when you learned how to drive a shift car. Now, each time you shifted it into a new gear, it took you, is it time? You looked at the dial. All right, into second. No, too soon. All right, wait. A little more back. How about is, it, is the clutch out enough? It took you full concentration. Somebody's speaking to you. You say, what do you want me to do? Rip the gears? Shut up. Wait until I'm in third. Yeah? Right? <laughs> you will become deliberate without even knowing that you're doing the speed of a juggle, the, the, the fluency. You just have to practice. You've got to practice it consciously until it's something that's second nature. That you're mulling it over and you're mulling over, why should I buy this suit? Why shouldn't I buy this suit? What should I say to the salesman to get him off my back without looking like an idiot? <laughs> you know, you're mulling it all over, right? And you're walking through life with confidence and knowledge and control. <sighs> Huh? Number 10 is, it's especially important and most difficult to use when you are criticized, attacked, when your parents tell you that, what's the matter with you? Why'd you leave the door open? Yeah? Because our natural reaction is what? It's to react. Yeah? And you're going to react. After you say, I don't have to close the screen door. Then you'll have to stand there and think, why in the world don't I have to close the screen door? They did tell me. Well, you can't order me around. Huh? But after all, the screen door's got to be closed. All the but you can't yell at me. But I didn't yell at you. Oh, okay. We got a whole afternoon of bad feelings, right? Because you reacted. So the first thing you've got to realize is that when somebody criticizes you, you're going to react to protect yourself. Don't. Squash it. You're going to react. You shouldn't react, but it'll take you a little while until you don't react and you walk deliberately. Yeah? So your first reaction is to react. Squash it. Sit on it. Right? And then think over what is the most favorable circumstances after that mistake of leaving the screen door open. Say, I'm sorry, Dad. I won't do it again. Close it. Ah, what a nice solution. It will never occur to you as the first thing to do. <laughs> never. Right? But if you think about it for a couple of minutes, two minutes, one minute, it will come into your mind. You know, I could apologize. You might even do it. Now, number 11 is that if you're having an argument or discussion, so the Pasuk says, the Bible, the Almighty tells us in Ketuvim, in uh, Mishle, Proverbs, Al es picho lanois. Don't hurry your mouth to answer. Because the nature of us human beings is, if somebody asks you a question, what are you living for? You hurry your mouth with an answer. But once you're committed to defending a point of view, or to arguing a point of view, then you're stuck with the, <laughs> You have to go on to find some form of reason or facsimile of reason or even an imitation of reason to defend. I mean, I, I, you know. So, pause for a moment. Think it over. If you have to say something, you say, that's a good point. Make him feel good. And think about it. You say, let me think about it. That'll make him feel excellent, right? And then let him have it. But clear. Because he's all wet, of course. Yeah. I mean, if he is. And the rabbis say, Lamod picho to say, Eni adeya. Teach your mouth to say, I'm not sure. It seems to me. So that you can back out, that you're not committed, you see. And then go on and explain your point of view. With a pause for thought. Now, it's true that in the beginning, people will think, you know, this guy's got a slow mind. Yeah, every time you say something, it's a good point. And he's got to think about it. There's something wrong with him. It's all right. Don't worry. They'll still like you. Yeah. B of this is that, for goodness sake, if you hear yourself and your second party in an argument going over the same territory ten times, did you ever hear yourself going over the... He says that, and you say that. And it's usually with parents or with siblings, you know. And they say one thing, you say the other, and then you go with the se second set. It's like a dance. You're locked into it. You know, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hey, you're back at the same point. Yeah? 
when you hear that going on, you say, wait, stop the record. Let's see. What is he saying? What am I saying? What, what's going on? Yeah. But don't keep going through the forms. I mean, that, that really is demoralizing. Yeah. Pause. What's the impasse? Deliberate on. Get it off that broken record. Very bad. Deal with the problem. Don't just go on and compound it. Number 12 is, that most important of all, is that every human being in this world has moments of truth, insights. We hear the beauty of the universe. Now I know my parents really love me. Now I know what it means to have a friend. Now I know how to have joy. Now, now I know all kinds of things. We human beings are powerful. And we think we've changed. We haven't. Why not? Why haven't we changed? We didn't bring it home. We didn't have confidence in it. It's just like one of those newspaper articles. You know, What did it mean? Why is it so? We didn't feel it, grab it, hold it. <coughs> and that will make it that the next moments you don't even consider. You figure, what the heck? <laughs> Become cynical. Lose your confidence in living itself. Sit on it. Then you'll keep it. At the very least, write it down. Not that it makes, but writing it down gives you a chance to go back to it. You see, like this, it just goes out. If you write it down, one out of ten, you'll be able to reconstruct. You'll be able to follow. But if you just forget about it, then, and then you're really messed up. You say, what did I see? You know, what was it that I felt yesterday? Ah, that really messes you up. At least if you write it down, it gives you another chance, another shot. Number 13 is that in action be yishuf, in action for living, which means that, you know, you prepare yourself for an interview, you're going to ask, you know, the guy's going to ask you the questions, and you're going to ask him for the job, you're going to ask him how much, no, you shouldn't ask him how much it'll pay first, you've got to make believe that you're interested in working, yeah? Don't ask the first thing, don't ask him how much you pay, yeah? Say, oh, I love to do work. What work do you have? Yeah? Right? Okay, so you plan out the whole thing, you know, and then you walk into the interview and you blurt out, how much do you pay? <laughs> hey, 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 oh! Yeah, what's the matter with me? Right? Or you work out exactly how you're confident and you're poised and you know you know that you can do it. And you say, well, I don't know whether I can do this work. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> why did you walk in there to tell them that you don't know whether you can do the work? What is the guy, are we supposed to reassure you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you do these stupid clunkers, you know, and, and you planned it, not, then what the heck? It's, so this happens all the time. It's not only a job interview. You plan to go home and have a wonderful time with your parents and no more fighting. Right? Now I'm going to be sweet and reasonable. I'm going to pause and deliberate. Yeah. Well, friends, it's the same thing as that planned interview. What do you need? Confidence? Deliberate. Mull it over. What will stand in your way? When you walk in there, what will happen? You'll be nervous. Deliberate on it. Do you really want to work? How are you going to convince the guy you want work and not pay? Well, maybe you should try something else. Deliberate. Don't just make these snap decisions. This is the way I'm going to do it, and this is the way it's going to be, and this is... It doesn't work. It's a dream. Until you are... Practice and deliberation, you know exactly, firmly, confident, this is what I'm going to do, and then you'll do it. You're a professional. Okay, so number 14 is that if we've understood this, then the idea is in wisdom, do the same thing. Wisdom is like an insight. Wisdom is action. So if somebody telling you the greatest pleasure in life, that's what Judaism says, the greatest pleasure in life is the love of God. Witness to it that Mr. Epstein... What's the greatest pleasure in life that you have? Not Julie? Children! Is children really pleasurable to our parents? Am I really their pleasure? Do I mean that? And the intellectual is the person who takes that moment to deal with ideas as realities. Yeah, that's right. Well, why did they yell at me? Test out the information that you have that's contrary. Why do they say that you are my greatest sorrow? Did you ever say that to Julie? 
No, that's a nice girl. But you said it to your sons once in a while, right? <laughs> no? Great, Mr. Shaw, sure, you, you controlled your temper. <laughs> right? But why do they say that to me? Because they're angry. No contradiction. I'm their greatest pleasure. They'll go to the ends of the world for me, etc. You got to settle it. True, not true. Do I agree? Don't I agree? Well, what does pleasure mean? So what does it mean? The love is pleasurable. What is that love? Is the definition that I heard here true? That they're looking at my virtues, they see my virtues, my beauty, my intelligence. Well, that's what they see, and that's their pleasure. There's so much to think about here, do you see? You can't just... <laughs> if I believe in God, can I love Him? Do you see that this is, this is really living? This is getting into, into the bit of life. And if you deal with these things without pausing to really work at it, you lose all your country. You don't know. There's something confused about you. If you deliberate, why ain't I working on the happiness game if I believe that? Why don't I want... Because I'm a little insane, friend. Yeah, that's right. The battle for life is a battle for sanity. Yeah. I don't go for the greatest pleasure. As a matter of fact, I quit most of the day. You do too. That's the human condition. You have to struggle against it. You got the answer. You know what the problem is. You know where we are. Then you have confidence in living. You know where you are. You're not afraid of people. You can move. You can really move for life. Number 15 is, you have to say, I'll think about it. I'll make a decision. I'll think about it. What most people mean is, if they're honest, if they're not giving you a dodge, is I'll agonize about it. I'll stay up half the night and I'll say, I will, I won't, I will, I won't, I will, I will, I won't. <laughs> I'll agonize about it. I promise you for half an hour and then I'll flip a coin. <laughs> I'll think about it. You understand? That's no way. When you have decisions to make, what does it mean to be deliberate, to mull it over? Pros and cons. Take a piece of paper and write them down. Why should you? All the reasons you can think of. Everything, even the most stupid reasons. Yeah? And all the reasons why not. Then you can think about it. Is this a valid reason? Then you can deliberate. And you go through it. And now you know how to make a decision. Or you say, really, I should? But I'm scared out of my wits? I don't feel like it. I'm insane. I will grow. I'll have a world of pleasure the rest of my life, but I'm running. All right, but I'm insane. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. But at least you got it clear. You got the issues clear. You have confidence. You know, you know that you can see reality and you can deal with it. And you can make decisions in very intelligent and forceful ways. So when you have an obvious decision to make, mull it over deliberate, but... Don't do it in your head. Put down a piece of paper. Pros and cons. Yeah. But number 16 is to realize all of life is really decisions. All of life is our ideas. The intellectual is the one who deals with ideas as realities. And all of life is decisions. What am I going to do the next half an hour? What am I going to do about this? Am I going to listen? Pay attention? What forces am I going to use? Or I'm just going to be passive? Am I going to question? Oh, it's all, all, all decisions, 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 decisions. And we make it without even looking. By whim. You can wind up with the Moonies, you can wind up with God. <laughs> By accident. Become aware, deliberate. What decisions am I making? On what basis am I making them? Then you start getting control of your living experience. All right, number 17 is that, look, let's say... You make a decision, I want greatness. You hear this, I want greatness on a piece of wisdom. I want this greatest pleasure in life. And I'm going to do something about it. That's another decision. Do you understand? These are two separate decisions. You're making a decision. This stuff is interesting. You notice that decision? This is very fascinating. This is worthwhile for someone to look into. Yeah, for me. But let's say you take it on, hey, this is right. Confidence requires that you make that decision. Hmm? Now you've got to make it another decision. What's the next decision? I'm going to do something about this. Wait, 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 wait. That's going too far. That's too sane. <laughs> you know, this is something worthwhile, but I'm going to do something about it. 
Yeah, yeah, the battle for life, the battle for sanity. If it's worthwhile, do something about it, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to do something about it. Watch out. Because that doesn't mean a thing, right? Deliberate. What are you going to do about it? What exactly? Make sure you know what you're talking about. Did you make any decision? You think you made a decision. Deliberate on it. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to work for greatness. I'm going to use my potential. I'm going to love God. I want the greatest pleasure in life. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Deliberate it? Like a job interview. All the way down. Mull it over. What's the problems? Where am I going to do it? What am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Why am I going to do it? What will go wrong? How am I going to get it done? Otherwise, you're going to live life saying, what's wrong with me? I make all these wonderful decisions. And I'm a stick in the mud. All right, you can prop yourself up one way or another. You know, after all, I did get a PhD. And after all, I am earning a good living. And I do have nice kids. And be patient down to the last this is what I'm going to do. All right. Uh, number 18 is that look for wisdom, any piece of wisdom. Remember that it's implied a piece of criticism. Al tavahel es picholanos. Don't hurry your mouth to answer. Don't hurry your mind to answer. It's not so true. It doesn't matter. It, that, no, think about it. Take your time. Any piece of wisdom. Number 19 is that in Jewish consciousness, the most important thing to be deliberate about is what are you living for and how are you living? Deliberate on it. What is your pleasure in life? Don't say, I don't care about fame. Of course you do care about fame. But it isn't the top priority. Or it isn't what I, I respect myself for caring. You've got to work it out, deliberate on it. Then what do you care? I want to be a good man. I want to accomplish. I want to help people. What do you mean I want to help people? I'm going to be a lawyer because I'm an idealist. I want to help people in law. What does that mean you want to help people? You want to help people get out of a jail sentence or you want to help society get rid of criminals? Yeah. Or you want to give people pleasure. You want to make the quality of life better. Why don't you go into anti-pollution law? <laughs> or is that, and that isn't the, the most important part of quality of life. You have to deliberate about your decisions. Otherwise, you're kidding yourself. You see? So you've got to know, what am I living for? What is the essence of living? And you have to deliberate, what am I going to do about it today, tomorrow, next year? It's tough, it's rough, but that's a common denominator of free will. If every human being, any human being, will actually use his perceptions, his intuitions, as to what life is about, rather than assuming and just going along with what society has taught him. And just getting into slots because the registrar, who was a cute little girl at college, uh, suggested that he, he major in uh, sociology because he looks like a sociologist. Yeah? I mean, we, we come to such conclusions. Yeah? If you think, what am I living for? What am I doing? Why work? What's... Then you will be a great man. And you will find truth. The Almighty is not hiding. They gave us the ability to live. Now, why is this necessary? Why is this necessary? So, the nature of a human being, you see, when I was a kid, I used to uh, work in the summer, and i come back to yeshiva in Elul. And um, I remember one summer I came back in the Rosh Yeshiva, the dean of Rosh Yeshiva, he said to me, Noah, he said, how are you going to study this, this semester? This is mine. I said, Rebbe, I'm going to be great. He said, no, I'll tell you, he said, I know you really want greatness. But the trouble with you, he said, is that you, you really, you're sincere. You want greatness. But the trouble with you is you want to be great in one night. And that night, you want to sleep. And I said, my Rosh Hashiva is a genius. He got me down to a T. Until I found out that this is the human condition. My friends, you all want to be great. You want to be great, Ted. Victor, you want greatness. We all want greatness. The trouble is, we want to do it one night, and that night we want to sleep. 
See, you can't be hasty. <laughs> you want to be great? You got to go about it deliberately. It takes you a couple of weeks. <laughs> it takes a little time. That's all. It takes a little time. Yeah. The second reason is that a human being necessarily, his first idea, his first look at something is shallow. It takes us time to digest things. So if you deliberate, then you get to, to your powers of understanding. If you don't take the time, you remain on the surface. And the surface is wrong. The third reason is that we human beings are weather veins. We have all kinds of feelings. One day you're, you're gloomy, you're pessimistic, and uh, you sell all your stock. It was the wrong day. One day you're euphoristic. You're feeling great. You buy, buy, buy. The wrong day. Yeah. You get it. Our feelings are... you got to be deliberate. <laughs> get into your perceptions, not your feelings. Not, hey, everything will go up. Hey, yeah, great. It's a great day today. Do you follow? We have a lot of women. The fourth reason is, like we mentioned, that we human beings have a lot of power. We have a lot of perceptions. During our lives, every one of us has the insights to, to change the world. The trouble is, if we don't take the time to settle it, to get it into ourselves, then we lose this. We lose it. Now we hear things, we study things, we understand. We have the wherewithal to be great. But unless we take the time to settle it into ourselves, gone. Okay, so... How, what are we going to do about this? One lamaisa. Now, to gain confidence, you see, the first thing that you've got to do is take one concept, one piece of wisdom that you believe in. Yeah? You want to be confident in your life? Is that what you believe in? Do you want humility? Do you want happiness? Something that makes sense. The greatest pleasure in life. is love of God, the greatest pleasure in life. So, take one concept that you've accepted as truth, then focus on it. Mull on it. Mull it over. Deliberate on it. Do I mean this? What does it mean to me? What, is this real to me? Do I really mean this? What am I going to do about it? Why not? What should be done about it? If I meant to do something about it, if I decide to do something about it, what should I do? Why am I not deciding it? Mull it over all the way until you have a clear-cut, confident decision <coughs> on this subject. You're going to do something about it because it's such and such, and this is what you're going to do when you see it all the way. Or I'm not going to do something about it because even though it's the greatest pleasure in life, I am still in the throes of a maniacal self-destruction image that will not allow me to have pleasure. Because I mean, I don't know what's, what's doing with you, friend. But know it. Know it. Then when you do that, take another. You do three pieces of wisdom, you have significantly improved your confidence in living.